Hello, beautiful seekers, and welcome to Moon Magic and the Taurus New Moon on April 22nd. This is a powerful time. We all can agree this is a powerful time. I think during that Libra full moon conversation, I was mentioning that everybody is experiencing this revolutionary time very differently. I think depending on how you grew up, what forms of stability or identity you've developed over the years to feel okay, to feel safe, uh, where you felt challenged or, or encouraged over the last few years, this whole time is going to feel completely different because certain things, certain paradigms are getting challenged and certain other ones are starting to become apparent. And I think this new moon in Taurus follows on the heels of that powerful Libra full moon that was so much about truth and authenticity and seeing through the cobwebs and getting back to an authentic, honest clarity. I think the new moon in Taurus takes us a step further into some deeper places. It's also an important moon in the sense that it activates a conversation that's kind of ongoing this year between Uranus and Saturn. These two big players are moving through the early degrees of Uranus and Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius. And Saturn is going to be moving around a little bit this year, doing some retrogrades and moving back to Capricorn. However, this new moon speaks to that square between these two powerhouse planets. And not only that, but the sun and the moon are really close to Uranus at the same time. So this conversation, we're going to get really back to some fundamentals here and it's needed, I think, at this time. So the sun and moon are at three degrees of Taurus. Uranus is at six degrees of Taurus. And then Saturn is still very early degrees at one degree of Aquarius. And these are the big placements for this moon. Uh, and the, these are really, we're going to be feeling the revolutionary spirit. Now, we can think about in terms of the disruptions right all around us and these patterns are no longer going in the way that they have been going what was status quo but i think we can take this more deeply internally as well because the note the first note that came up for me when i started thinking about this really important square with sun moon and uranus squaring saturn and in the signs that they are they are doing that in and in the way that they are conversing the the phrase that came into mind for me is lean into what your true nature is and challenge what it is not. Now, you know, a lot of times you hear people talk about, oh, just be yourself, do whatever you want. And the counter argument to that is, well, if everybody's just doing whatever they want, won't they just do violent things or selfish things or destructive things or be manipulative or terrible. And sure, there's a percentage of people that will will do wild, destructive things. We're each on our own path and I can't speak to the percentages there, right? Or any or vouch for every single person. However, what I will say is that that is part of a paradigm that has been ingrained in us, that has told us that liberation equals getting to drink as much as you want that liberation means you know fighting or burning things down right that it means these kind of rebellious acts that show that we don't have to be held down right and this moon in all this nurturing taurus energy i mean these three planets are talking so close together in taurus taurus the empress the mother earth the sacred cow this is I'm getting full body shivers when I'm talking about this. This is very important energy. And the mother never says, t she's not focused on destruction. She's not focused on numbing. She's not focused on tearing down, right? 
true nature for her is going to be listening into the complexity of our emotions, that that bittersweetness that is life, you know, that the, the joy and the and the sadness that we experience simultaneously in those beautiful moments throughout life in daily life that is part of our true nature and the more we're stepping into that the more we're welcoming that in the more we get into lockstep with taking actions that feel full of liberation and that feed ourselves our souls and those around us and this is a paradigm breaking important rush of energy that we need because i've talked about this before but a lot of the psychology around 20th century advertising, right? You need these cigarettes in order to feel cool. You need this beverage, these clothes, this idea it has instilled in us a sense that our liberation is tied to these kind of ritualistic consumption of things, right? That that's where we are actually free this whole moon is going to fly straight in the face of that and say is that really true and i know many of us have already explored this via different aspects of life and have found that it isn't true that it doesn't fill us right and that that consumption of things isn't what is the liberated path so that's the first note that comes up the second note has to do with the square with Saturn in Aquarius. So Saturn, father time, the guy that loves structure and, and discipline, right? In Aquarius, he's home there. He's comfortable in Aquarius. However, he works very differently than he does in Capricorn. Because Saturn in Aquarius wants us to remember that making wise choices and taking action in the world can go really deep and can help us to help ourselves and help others that it is so much deeper and bigger than just being busy than just pushing ourselves to the brink. And this is another one of the revolutionary paradigm shifting energies that happens with this new moon. Because especially in American culture, I'm going to call it right now, but in a lot of Western culture and a lot throughout the world, this has become more and more of a thing as we've kind of become more of a global community and more interconnected. This whole idea of having a hustle, this whole idea of, you know, being proud that you're working 60 or 70 hours a week because that shows your value. You know, even if you're not somebody who is like an overworker, there's a mentality that you don't deserve something unless you're pushing yourself so hard. And this square with Saturn and Uranus is challenging all of that. There's a difference between just pushing, pushing, pushing and showing up to do something that, yes, requires devotion, requires skill, requires effort, but doesn't necessarily feel heavy and like chains and like it's holding you prisoner, right? So... This is also challenging any notions of our self value based on versions of discipline that have also been ingrained in us in the consumption culture of the 20th century. Work hard so that you can consume this thing that will make you whole. And this cycle is what will make you whole, right? That's, and it's really subtle. And many of us don't consciously think this in our day to day lives, you know? But I think we've all had moments where that felt like it was a true equation and this moon is just getting straight to that that's that's my point being you can have thought about this a lot but the energy of this new moon is very much tied to breaking those patterns down and scattering them to the wind And this is a big theme for 2020 and it's a big theme for the next few months and it's something that we're going to keep checking in with um, and I will be doing a, a new moon activation over on Patreon if you want to join me we're going to be doing a big talk there also this moon is heralding in a new energetic cycle that we are going to start seeing applied in May with the nodes of the moon moving into Gemini or the north node moving into Gemini, the south node into Sagittarius, uh, with a whole bunch of retrogrades happening with big outer planets. 
And this new moon actually also happens right before Pluto goes retrograde as well on the 25th. So we have a lot of energy that is going to be helping us to anchor in this new paradigm more effectively in the real world. Um, and I don't want to underestimate as well, while I'm talking about this square with Uranus and Saturn, to think about what a new moon in Taurus does for us, right? If we just look at that sun-moon conjunction in Taurus. I want to get back to the wisdom of the, the goddess, the empress, the earth goddess, right? She, this is earth-based energy. And yes, Taurus are actually very hardworking people. I know many of you out there and I love you. You're part of my soul clan for sure. Um, so, and tend to actually get that yoke on and go, go, go a little too much. You know who you are. Take a break. Um, so it's funny because a lot of pop astrology will say that people with like energy and Taurus are very lazy and love to snack and lounge around. And yes, they do love the good things in life. However, they do work hard. Here's the difference. In an activated, clear, powerful way, Taurus energy, when it is focused and directed, will make the thing happen. But it's not because they're spread thin. It's not because you're doing this over there and this over there and this over there. It's because you choose and you select with discretion and with clarity what it is you really want to manifest in this life. And it's normally not that many things that we really truly desire, our true nature, right? We listen to our true nature. What is our true nature telling us to do? It's it's not telling us to, to like go on a bender and drink all night and like, um, make out with everybody and haphazardly send texts to people, right? You know, like that's, eh, you know, true nature is going to be calling you to do something deeper. It's going to be calling you to have like a deep, profound conversation that's vulnerable. It's going to be calling you to sit quietly. It's going to be calling you to con reconnect with your body. Okay, cards are coming out here. I started shuffling. Page of wands, nine of wands. Love it. And so the big question here, this whole moon is going to be, what is your true nature asking you to show up for? What is the divine mother within you asking you to show up for? What is the divine loving warm energy that holds you wanting you to connect with, right? From that place, the actions we take, the liberated actions we take are not disturbing for other people. They're not selfish. They are based on an interconnected, calm, peaceful, loving state. And I think that's the thing. We have, there are heartbreaks in the world right now. There are scary things happening. Instability, uncertainty, all sorts of things are happening in the world, right? The, the, and the moon energy, Taurus energy together like this remind us that, yeah, those things are happening and we can still tap into the divine. The divine is not negated by hardship in life. Divine actually shows up in those places that feel scary or dim or dire, they sh the divine light shows up in all places all the time. And it, and it understands the interconnectedness of, of joy and sadness, of uncertainty and hope, and works with it. And when we allow that to sit with us, we can see how we can move through the world even when it's unclear completely, right? So sitting with that wisdom is really important at this time. And those of us who can tap into that help everybody around us. We help everybody who comes in contact with us, everybody we even see across the street or um, on a video call or in any context. That calm mothering light, that anchor point is so powerful. I've been waiting for the third card and it's the wheel of fortune and yes, Yes, it is very much Wheel of Fortune energy. For those of you, like myself, as a Leo sun, the, that have fixed signs in your chart, so Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, you'll be noticing these conversations going on in this new moon feel pretty intense. 
uh, because they're really hitting on the fixed sign energy, right? And fixed signs are about what we can sustain over the long haul, right? It's not about the initiation or the shift period. It's about what we can sustain over the long haul, what we can commit to and really bring to fruition. Now, these are really interesting cards and it's the message that comes to mind is it's time, right? It's time. The Page of Wands is always a news bringer, right? He brings in clarity and there is clarity at this time. There is a lot of clarity coming in, in fact. Um, some of it may feel a little unfamiliar, a little strange, a little experimental, a little bit <laughs> off the beaten path. Page of Wands is very experimental, uh, is willing to jump in and try and likes to bring in that kind of naive, playful, fresh perspective. Uh, it's not about the status quo or being experienced. It's not about, I already know how to do this. It's about, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to try. It's that kind of trepidation, not trepidatious, uh, intrepid, <laughs> much better word, intrepid spirit that says, I'm going to try. And, you know, those of us who can tap into that at this time are going to really feel the impact of this moon. Now, the Page of Wands is in a very different mental space than the Nine of Wands. Uh, you kind of can think about these two as like, <laughs> the Page of Wands is the young man before going off to war or something, and the, and the Nine of Wands is him at the end of it. Um, but I think the thing here to remember is that this is not how the story necessarily has to go. We've been told many times that life is going to do this to us. It's going to take our young hopeful dreams and it's going to show us why we can't have them and why we should look out and why we should be afraid, right? That's been the story. Now, part of the lesson here right now is that that doesn't have to be the story. That we, ha we can start to understand that there's never this linear progression from point A to point B and that there's constant conversation. Now, the part of ourselves that's page of wands and wants to activate, try things, see what happens, be open to new solutions, be open to doors opening that we can't see or understand instead of shutting our hearts down and shutting our abilities down and saying we can't. That is going to be in conversation with the part of ourselves that says, I'm afraid. I'm just going to hold on. I'm going to keep monitoring this landscape and looking for the things that are going to tear me down, right? I always have nicknamed the Nine of Wands, the world weary warrior. And that's an interesting theme that keeps coming up uh, in all my work right now with with one on one coaching and with readings of any kind that I'm doing writing of any kind that I'm doing is this theme, the exhaustion of wearing the armor, the exhaustion of constantly having to put the armor on in order to fit into this work consumption narrative we've been given as the way to be happy. And we put this armor on in order to deal with it. And it's terrible for our whole systems. And we're just tired of wearing the armor. We're tired of showing up to the table like this. And that's where Wheel of Fortune comes in. Right? The wheel of the year turns. And once again, you know, fixed signs show up in this card in each of these symbols at the corner of the card, we have the, the four fixed signs, uh, the, the heart and core of each season. Taurus is the heart of the spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Rebirth and Taurus, I always think about the May Queen and May 1st and her resurrection from the underworld to the upper world and her slaying and resurrection of the green man and their union to create something new. Uh, it's a really symbolic time of year, late April and early May, always have to do with the resurrection of a new worldview, the release and the forgiveness, forgiveness and the, the release of judgment around anything in the past. And there being an understanding that things are cyclical, that things rise and fall, that they come and go, and that also in that cyclicality, there is no such thing as a past that holds us. There is no such thing as, well, I was this person three months ago, so I have to keep being this person. I have Because I wasn't brave maybe in early March and didn't do that thing, that means I can't be brave next month. There's a release that comes with Wheel of Fortune that says these things do not dictate how we move forward. We are always allowed to be in Page of Wands mode at any moment. 
we can always open ourselves up to whatever opportunities want to come in. And once again, that initiating spirit, that clarity of impulse, that clarity of action, right, that I see with the page of wands comes from very clearly from the innate sense of who we are, our true nature from that self mothering, self loving, self respecting core that we have, that then has us acting in the world in a way that represents that true nature. And yeah, it is not what we have been told our true nature is. I cannot tell you the number of times I've had to have arguments about <laughs> with different types of people. And I love to have a good argument um, for fun, right? Not just to like yell, but really to have an intellectual engagement where people have told me, well, that's just who we are. If we just let people do whatever they want, they're just going to be violent. They're just going to start wars. They're just going to, you know, eat and drink whatever they want and feel bad. Um, that isn't a truth. It's not a quantifiable truth. Um, there is nothing that says <laughs> that's it. Yes, there are, you know, biological, anthropological studies that show, you know, patterns within societies and cultures. But once again, does that dictate who we are tomorrow? Does that dictate who we are today in this moment? I don't think so. And I think this moon is really speaking to that, that false sense that because things have been hard or brutal or dark in the past, that they have to be again, that history repeats itself, that it's always the same. I don't think that necessarily has to be true. But if we decide that it does have to be the same, of course, we can make that happen together. <sighs> okay, so big energy here, big, bold energy, things to kind of keep in mind just with your own personal journey within this. Um, you're each going to be noticing maybe where those stories or beliefs that have felt so true are rising up or coming up. You may notice something there's a little resistance there. You may feel a little agitated with this moon. Squares can often bring up some agitation, some big emotions, some bristling. So if you can do anything to connect with your body, whether that's deep breathing or a long walk or even getting some extra sleep, um, maybe keeping it low on the caffeine intake, which is tough for me because coffee is my the one thing that I will allow myself to have <laughs> that I love so much. Um, you know, try and, and keep yourself soothed, however that is, hydration, rest, reconnect with your body because it is stirring up the waters. There's a purpose. There's kind of this agitation saying, is that really working? Is that really working? But underneath that, there's also the wisdom of the goddess of the grounded, beautiful, earthy energy of the moon in Taurus, which is about harmony and love and the divine mother within us. So I will be doing an activation for this new moon where we go through, I come up normally with a, a ritual or a practice that really connects with the moon when we get a lot closer to it so that you can feel really connected with it and calm. So if you're looking to do that, I will be having that over on my Patreon. Um, we're also going to be doing a ton over there with Venus retrograde. I'm planning on doing a weekly series over there for every week of that retrograde to help us understand and navigate the healing going on there. All of these great resources are, are coming out every week. So if you want to join me, I would love to see you over there. If you are already with me, we are having such a good time. I will see you all in the next Moon Magic. And of course, for the May readings, because May is going to be powerful, wildly powerful. This is a huge time of shift. This is a huge time of connecting in. And we really are letting go of the last couple of years of learning. There was a theme going on there with the learning. Now we're starting to do something different. And I'm excited about that personally. If you would like to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I have a few sessions left in late May. I will also be opening up more sessions in June. So you can find all of my info in the link below, as well as find me on Instagram at Sarah Verba. And of course, Pink Loon's beautiful jewelry. If you are looking for something to connect you and ground you and have some of that Taurus magic in your life, you can go check out her Etsy shop as well. 
I am sending you so much love and I will see you very soon.